And what I want to introduce you to is how exactly do you deal with weak hadith? How exactly do you deal with weak hadith? So the first thing we're going to do is look at what actually makes a hadith authentic. What criterion are we looking at to make a hadith authentic? And there are five conditions that need to be met in order to, for a hadith to be authentic. Condition number one is it the soul of Sanad. And that is the chain of narrators needs to be continuous from the time of the Prophet ﷺ till the time of compilation. Till the time of compilation. So in this case, it is Ibn Majah. So from the Prophet ﷺ to Ibn Majah, there has to be a continuous chain of narration. Number two is Adalat al ruwat which is the trustworthiness of the narrators that are narrating this hadith. When they talk about trustworthiness, they're looking at two things. Number one is the level of piety, meaning that did they fall into sins publicly? Did they do major sins? And then number two is were they known for any deviations? Were they known for any deviations? Like were they known to be affected by Shia theology or Qadari or Khawarij theology or any of those things? That is what they're referring to in Adalat al ruwat Condition number three is Tam al -dabt, precision in narrating hadith. And this will completely deal with one's memory and how capable they are in terms of narrating hadith. And it is in this section where you'll start to find that you'll have different levels of weaknesses. So certain individuals, they were known for terrible memories. And these people will be known as munkar al-hadith, that their hadith are pretty much completely rejected. So when these hadith come forward, we don't accept them. Not in meaning, not in virtue. And what we can say is, that the meaning of the hadith may be true because we find it in other narrations or in other ayat of the Qur'an but this specific hadith will not be authentic and that completely deals with the precision in narrating it precision in narrating it then number four is adumu illatin qadiha is that there should be no defect in the hadith that renders it null and void now what do we mean by a defect in the hadith? So what happens sometimes is that when you look at the chain of narration, they may perhaps skip an individual's first name, but they'll mention his last name. So you'll hear frequently Ibn Dinar. Ibn Dinar, there are a couple of them from the past, and regardless of which ones they were, of who they are in the chain of narration, they were trustworthy narrators. They were trustworthy narrators. And therefore you didn't have to really look deep down as to this hadith still authentic or not, because regardless of which Ibn Dinar it is, then it won't make a difference. It doesn't affect the hadith because bo uh, both of them, that the famous ones at least, are well known and established and we don't have to look at them. So this is an, uh, an example of a defect that does not harm the hadith, that does not harm the hadith. But let us look at a defect that will harm the hadith. Let us look at a defect that will harm the hadith. So we have the famous hadith of the seven that are shaded under the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The day that there is no shade other than the shade of Allah. One of those categories is an individual that gave sadaqah, an individual that gave charity. Who remembers what made this individual that gave charity so special? What made that individual that gave charity so special that Allah shades him on the shade of, uh, on the day of judgment? He's, I need more precise wording. I need time adopt over here. Take a guess. Would, would, you, would you give sadaqah with your right hand or with your right, uh, left hand? Right. With your right hand. So your sadaqah is given so secretly with your right hand that your left hand does not know what it gave. And this is the version that is authentic. This is the version that is well established. But you have another version of this hadith, and this is the mistake from the narrator, that says that the individual gave charity so secretly with his left hand that his right hand did not know what it gave. And this is something that it would impact the hadith and would make it deficient. So here you have an example that would impact the wording of the hadith and would harm the hadith because the desired meaning is completely changed now. So there should be no hidden defects in the hadith that will harm the hadith. And then uh, number five, condition number five is Adam ash-shudud. Adam ash-shudud. That there should be no contradiction in the hadith with ayat in the Quran, nor should there be any contradiction in the hadith with those hadith that are more authentic than it. And this is what Adam ash-shudud is referring to. 
So those are the five conditions that needs to be met. Don't worry, you're not going to be tested on them. But it's good to have a reference point. Because we hear this term authentic hadith and weak hadith. It's good to understand what these terms actually mean.